this. All right, Fatty, you there? Yes, I'm here. Leo, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Introducing authentic realness. Hello, hello, and hello again. We are back for yet another episode of our Authentic Realness Podcast, ARP. Realness. And as I've said to you all on so many occasions, it's, it's exciting. It's invigorating. It is a testament to how God works when you think about how this all came about. When you, I've had a series of folks who... <laughs> would ask me all the time leading into this development of how God has taken me on this journey of like, are you on TV and your voice sounds familiar and you look familiar and do you sing and you have a special voice and all that. <laughs> and certainly in, in listening to all that, I just allowed the Holy Spirit to minister to me. And, and we've now got to this, this first phase here of the podcast. And we're rocking and rolling from a vantage point where we have our weekly episodes on every Wednesday. We have developed some very specific things around this Authentic Realness podcast, ARP, that's specific to us like we have our signature components that's related to this how exciting is that and we have our our folks which are our authentic realness experts and certainly i need to do a much better job of getting more people engaged because there are about 20 folks that god has revealed to me to be a part of that and then we have these amazing topics we have babby we have theo we have just a movement of god that's related to the eight service offerings of me as a consultant. And I tell you all, it's just such an amazing journey when you allow yourself to be a willing vessel of the movements of God. And I am truly a living testament to what happens when you open yourself to movements from God. With that, Theo, What's going on with you tonight, brother? Man, you know, I, I like to keep it simple. I'm grateful as always, man. Another day, um, God is God is still in the blessing business is, is all I can say. And you still even got an um in there with that too. My God. You know, sometimes it comes with excitement, <laughs> but no excuses. <laughs> Clearly it does. <laughs> and yes, everybody, I love giving Theo a hard time. <laughs> Along with everybody else. <laughs> with that, Fabby is gone again. You have to get rid of Fabby. Like you, stay how, being grown. How many days you take it off? She be out here being grown, man. <laughs> right, absolutely, and certainly she's gonna get us from this one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but she'll be back again soon. All right. Well, tonight let's jump right in, and we're going to go from that extreme phase of laughter and joking to very serious topic. And you all remember the episode of Rescinded. And certainly I was feeling a a certain kind of way, yet I remained calm, cool, and collected because I knew that it was a journey and a process that God was taking me through. What I want to talk about tonight, though, is part two of Rescinded. And the hallelujah moment is that I have landed a new project as my primary project, which is truly the project that God had me to be on. And and if you all would think about it this way, had I gone through the process with the other role, then I would not have been available for this particular role. So I really want that to resonate with someone who's going through something right now where they felt like they had a rescinded moment or they had a rejection moment or they had a moment where things didn't go the way that they wanted. I'm on the other side of one of those situations where I can tell you what God has for you is for you. 
and the process and journey that you have to go through, oftentimes it's not a straight line. The hallelujah moment in this is, again, the new project, primary project has been landed. This is the way it was supposed to go. And the blessing was here all along. So what I'm going to take as a topic and a theme for tonight is part two of Rescinded. It was, it is a blessing all along. And I want us all to kind of go on that journey tonight. When you think about the concept of, of storytelling, and one of the things that, that I do is as a reader, I'm often reading and I'm often in, in my thoughts and I'm often thinking about how to become better, how to make even this podcast better. And one of the things that I came across recently, which I found to be very intriguing about storytelling, is that there are typically two things in those folks who are effective in storytelling. One is typically a stories about love. Always pull people in and people listen. So that, that's item number one. And it's pretty hard to kind of talk about love in the eight services that I offer, other than my love for God and thanking him for providing me with these gifts and talents, as well as the love that I have within the passion that goes along with the work that I do. Yet it's not, quote unquote, a love story, if you will, other than if you're looking at the love story of the journey of my career and how God has got me to this point and the acknowledgement of him. But it's not your typical love story of what you would expect in successful storytelling. But the other component that I've found in just reading as to what makes storytelling effective is people who are capable of providing the detail. Whereas when they're talking or when they are writing, you're able to actually visualize what's being written or said. It's always my objective to provide the detail so that you all can really see the color of what I am talking about. Because I'm one of these people who I do dream in color. I don't dream in black and white. Like it's, it's very colorful in my dreams. So I want to build an episode tonight when I talk about rescinded from a vantage point of the high road component and the high road component is I didn't get bent out of shape. I was not taken aback. I handled the situation in the way that I needed to handle it. I handled the company in the way, the way I need to handle the company. I handled the individuals in the way that I need to handle the individuals with a complete certainty, understanding that the odds of those individuals ever having a rescinded situation with anyone else is likely never. And in turn, I really want you all to understand how significant boldness is and the component that it plays in our lives that oftentimes one would say, Real hey, plush, just let it go. It is what it is. It wasn't meant to be. Keep it moving. Yes, that was one part of it. But the second part of it was to address it, to address it head on, to address it directly. And now we're in the situation that we're in, that the blessing of what God had for me, I'm now living it, loving this project, flexing in this project, doing exactly what I've been gifted to do with this particular project. So I can't tell you all just how elated I am to be able to share part two of rescinded to say it's no longer rescinded, but it's accepted. It is promotion into this new project, which directly aligns to me as a consultant and provides the opportunity for me to operate in the capacity of the core of my being professionally at that project management level and being able to see things before the delivery and the due date and being able to map it out in a way that is successful. And of course, you all heard the alarm going off because that's a significant part too of <laughs> how this process of me staying organized works. So Theo, in you hearing this part two of acceptance and this part two of approval and promotion, what are your immediate thoughts? You know, my immediate thoughts goes back to how one of the central components we do discuss is faith. 
And for me, I would ask you within those moments of searching and in those moments where one may feel discouraged because, you know, it's happening to a lot of people right now where jobs are laying off left and right. Contracts are being ended. What advice would you give a person, you know, wait that, that has ended one position is waiting on the next or in search of yeah. the next? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a great one. And I tell you, it, it starts the same way that I answer all questions when people ask me, like, hey, what, are, what should I do? Well, the number one thing you should always do is look to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the looking into the Lord process is my constant is God. And as a part of my constant, it's going to be prayer. Mm -hmm. And in turn, I tell you, the number one thing that you want to do in those instances is be in God's face and be in prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, be in prayer, though, from a real place. Don't, don't come with the soliloquies, the dissertations, the what sounds good. Come with the real. Have that conversation with your father regarding what it is that he's doing. What is he moving you to next? What would it be that he would have you to do? And understand now that a lot of times you might need to just stay right there on your knees and allow him to minister and allow him to tell you. And then you have to do your part, which is taking the action of whatever it is that he's directing you to do. The other thing that I tell you is to always remember that it doesn't always rain. So if you find yourself in a season where you feel that it's raining, know that the sun is coming out again. And as a part of that, it's raining right now, the sun is coming out again. Have that understanding that there is a purpose. There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. I always use the example, Theo, that it's pretty hard for a preacher, a counselor, a therapist, or anyone to talk to you about something they themselves have not been through. I tell you, this whole rescinded situation has now allowed me to be better equipped as a mentor, has allowed mm -hmm. me to be better equipped as a sponsor, Good. has allowed me to be better equipped in talking about this topic because before it was one that I was talking about from a theoretical perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a significant level of empathy, but when you go through something yourself and you know firsthand what it's like to have an offer and for that offer to be rescinded, please understand I can talk to anybody now who's had a rescinded offer and I can talk from a real place. I can give them the specifics. I can give them the example. And in, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I'll even give you who the organization was. As I'd mentioned in the initial conversation about this, though, I'm, I'm way too classy to even call these people out because they're not even going to get any dominion. That's not where God was leading me. I didn't need to call them by name. I just needed to call the situation and I needed to call the people out. I needed those folks to understand in very certain terms is that, no, what you've done is not illegal, but it's unethical. And if you can sleep at night doing these type things, then that's on you. But what you're not going to do is do it to me and I not call it out for you. That's it. So then that last component, brother, that I tell you when you're you're going through that season of, of a rescinded offer or a layoff or whatever the case might be, is beyond prayer and beyond knowing that the sun is going to come back out again after your rain. That last component truly is understanding in certain terms, in addition to it's hard to talk about something if you haven't gone through it yourself. So therefore, there is that component that you're going through it for you to be able to minister to somebody else later, for you to be able to truly be a subject matter expert on this particular topic, to talk about it within your podcast <laughs> or as a guest on a podcast or whatever the case might be. But that last component is a very simple one, but very hard for us to do. And that's trusting that God knows what he's doing. Mm. Notice I didn't say Theo knows what he's doing. Notice I didn't say Fabi knows what she's doing. Notice I didn't say that Plush knows what he's doing. Trust that God knows what he is doing. Stop giving these employers and these companies and situations so much dominion over you. As a matter of fact, don't give them any dominion over you. Yeah. They didn't fire you. They didn't get rid of you. They didn't rescind you. They did not offer you the job. They don't have that power. But when you trust God, you know that you're going through this situation for a reason. 
And as you're going through that process for a reason in that trust, no, the other side is coming. What else you got, brother? Mm, that's good wisdom. That's a, that's a lot to chew on. But, um, you know, when, when, no, I don't know. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'm on fire tonight, you, brother. You definitely are. You definitely are. Now, when it comes to the offer being rescinded, I know that you in a place of you go after the jobs that align with your purpose, that align with what you are doing. Would you say that, you know, how would you say, I know that you've dealt with it in the past and going between different jobs and things of that nature. Do you feel as if within that, that time period where you have a chance to think, would you, did you ever have a mindset of pivoting and going a different direction? All the time. Okay. <laughs> because ultimately you got to remember Theo. first of all, <laughs> there's nobody that I know that does what I do. Mm-hmm. So let's think about that. There's nobody that I know that does what I do. There are people who do similar things as me. But when I think about what I offer as a consultant, when I think about what I offer under Aaron R Plush Consulting and what I offer under Aaron R Plush The Brand, it's only me. So in that, I tell you that all of these things developed from pivoting. <laughs> but for me, a pivot doesn't mean that you have to stop what you were doing. A pivot simply means that you make a pivot to do this too. Because remember how often I've told you all in these episodes, too often in life, we really need to get away from the OR word. Or, well, I'm going to do this or this, or that or that, or this or that. Many a times, what I've found, it's A and D, and. You can do this and that and this and that and this and this and that and that too, and be okay. Now, the, the key component in that is ensuring that you're doing all of those things, all the A and Ds, all the ands with the spirit of excellence. Now, if you're sp spreading yourself too thin, if you're in a situation where you know this is not your expertise and <laughs> you're quote unquote faking it until you make it, you're going to fail. It's not going to work out for you. But if you're in a position where you're able to find some harmony and you're able to do them all well, and you are one being able to pay your bills, because that's important. And then two, you're in a position where you love what you do. You have passion about what you do. You have joy. Because I'm going to tell you, I came across this amazing note on LinkedIn today. And it talked about productivity isn't about being a workhorse, keeping busy or burning the midnight oil. It's more about priorities, planning, and fiercely protecting your time. So for all those folks who think it's all about, oh, I got to work all night. Oh, I need to be pushing. Oh, I'm, I'm on the grind. Yeah, there's a time and place for that. But please understand that if you're burning the candle at both ends, it's only a matter of time that that wick is going to totally burn out in the middle and you, the candle, will no longer exist. So you have to find your harmony and understanding as this quote so eloquently puts it. It's more about priorities you got to prioritize. You got to know which one of these things I'm going to do today. There's only 24 hours in a day. And if you are working on 25 or 26, let me be the one to provide you with a very bad news flash. If you are operating within 26 hours in a day, you're already two hours into the next day. And you still only got 22 more in that, in that next day you're already in. Stop kidding yourself. So that's where prioritizing comes in. Then the planning component. I can't tell you all. I've used an example recently of how often people plan because I like to use 
the example of an airplane for planning that literally you want to start on the ground and you want to build your plans and then you want to build the plane and then you get the plane on the runway and then you take off. And then while you're taking off, you have those that up going up. And in turn, you're, you get to the sky and you're, you're rocking and rolling. You're doing what you got to do. And then you do your initial descent and then you come back down and you land. Well, too often what happens is the plane is in the middle of the air and, and folks start planning in the middle of the air. Like, hey, oh, we might need this other wing. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> you really might. <laughs> <You're thinking. laughs> oh, we might need some seats. Oh, we might need the second engine. So I say that to say that that planning component, and I just thank God for blessing me with that gift and talent that I cherish. It's so important. But then fiercely protecting your time. It's a commodity, folks. You don't get it back. So when people are like, oh, you're so radical. Like, it's supposed to start at 8 o'clock. I'm here at 8. No, no what you're not going to do is waste my time. I just had my class reunion this past weekend, and and yes, I'm going to put my officers on the spot, and I hope they all listen. So for me, as my class president, as a professional planner, I take this stuff seriously. My class reunions for my class have been absolutely amazing, every one of them, and I pour me into them. So I arrived at the venue at 3.30. My ass of my officers for them to be there at 7.30. Do you know at 7.30, none of them were there? And some rolled in after. Now, when the first couple got there, three, we talked what we were supposed to talk about. We prayed and we got our night started and we did what we had to do. But here's the thing, folks. Don't come in here looking at me sideways when I'm checking you because I've been here since 3.30. I've been here since 3.30. You roll. I'm asking you to be here at 7.30 and you roll in after 8. Get out of here. You got to be kidding me. Clearly, you don't know who you're dealing with. But again, let's just say, oh, well, I'm depending on you all to open the doors. Now our event is thrown off. Now all the things that we've talked about has been a waste of time. That Then the experience that we said to the people that we were going to provide, we're not provide. Well, no, no. <laughs> but on the flip side, when I'm not the head, when I'm not the leader, guess what? I'm still going to be there at 3.30. And let me tell you why, because I know what it's like to be the leader. <laughs> it's a lonely place. It's, it's easy for you to step back and throw your stones and talk about, oh, he thinks this and he thinks that. I don't think anything. You do. What I do is I operate in the spirit of excellence. And I'm not going to downplay the fact that I operate in the spirit of excellence. And if you want to call that arrogance and uh, it's not, it's just the truth. There's a difference. You know, arrogance comes from a place where I'm doing it to impress you. No, I'm doing it because this is who I am. I'm doing it because I honor God in all of my time. That if, if I'm going to do something, it's all in or not at all. If subpar and mediocre is your standard, then you're going to have a problem with me. <laughs> and the problem with me has nothing to do with me. The problem with me is you because you choose to live a subpar average life. That's not my fault. But don't try to put your subpar average unhappy self on me, particularly when it comes to something as time because we don't get it back. So going back to this very specific example I'm here at 3.30. You're asked to come at 7.30. You get here after 8 o'clock. You get here at 7.30. Huh? <laughs> make it make sense. It, 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 it doesn't. It don't. It doesn't. But again, I'm the tyrant. <laughs> I'm this. I'm that. The event, the experience did not happen because of you coming after eight o'clock. <laughs> the event and the experience happened two and a half years before it happened in my mind. Then it went on paper. 
Then it was implementation. Then it was doing all of the steps that needed to happen leading up to that. Then the night came and the night happened in the way that it was planned. Not kind of, not close to, not in the neighborhood. It was implemented exactly to the letter of how it was planned two and a half years before. Two and a half. That's a very long time to carry on a project and action plan. But I knew that's what it was going to take to, to raise the money and all those type of things. So for the folks who want to hate and have comments and whatever else, you too can be great. But greatness comes from activity. It goes back to what I said to you before, Theo. Sido, consistent, intentional, deliberate, discipline, obedience, and accountability. And know that that DOA ending part is definitely twofold. You can have the discipline, obedience, and accountability, or you could be dead on arrival. You decide. It's your choice. So from a place of humility and humbleness, I thank and praise God for the gifts and talents that he's given me, especially the gift of planning. The blessing to all of you, though, is in very certain terms. The plans have to be non-negotiable. The timing has to be non-negotiable. 7.30 means at Latest, I should have been there at 7 o'clock. You have a meeting that starts at work, Zoom, Teams, whomever. Don't show up at your 3 o'clock meeting at 3 o'clock. Just don't do it. Set an alarm at a minimum for 2.55. Because let me tell you what's never going to happen. It's never going to hurt you to be early to the meeting. Ever. And when this becomes your norm that you're on every call Five minutes before, like, gee, what is Theo doing? But guess what begins to happen? When Theo gets that promotion over you, don't be surprised. Because trust and believe, folks are taking notice to who's early and also they're taking notice to who's late. But the being early shouldn't be for the people. The being early shouldn't be for the boss. It shouldn't be for the CEO. It shouldn't be... It should be for your own personal integrity brand. That's where success lies, people. That's where it lives. It lives with you. Like, you have to do these things for you. You never get any affirmations. You never get any pats on the back. You never get, oh, great job, Theo. You don't need that because you already know you did a great job. And you know you did a great job because you gave it all you had. And that has nothing to do with comparing yourself to Plush or Fabby or Susie or Johnny or Mary or Sarah or John or Jermaine or anybody else. It's Theo. So I say all of that to say, in very certain terms, bringing us back, there are eight services that I offer. <laughs> all eight services that I offer, I do it with the spirit of excellence because of who God has created me to be. And when I don't do things with the spirit of excellence, it's an insult to him and it's an insult to me. Far from perfect. Practice makes improvement. When I do have my shortcomings and shortfalls, I'm the first person to raise my hand and say, hey, it was me. Didn't do what I was supposed to do. Didn't get it done. But trust and believe I'm going to get it done. That's that human component. We all have it. Somebody tells you they don't, they're lying. So in this particular episode, this is the first one that's actually changed name. Beginning was part two rescinded and the ending, the heck with rescinded. It's all about acceptance. It's about growth. It's about promotion. And it was a blessing all along. That's what it's all about. And it's all about trusting God. Thank you all for allowing my rant. <laughs> And I, that rant is going to bless somebody. I just pray that you all take it for what it is. Don't misconstrue my words. Don't mix them up. Don't twist them up. Don't tie it up. Don't do any of that. Take it for the essence of growth, 
development, movement, greatness. Because this is where it comes from. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father God, just thank you, God, for being who you are. God, you're so amazing and you're so much better to me, God, than I could ever imagine being to myself. And for that, I say thank you. God, I just want to lift up the listeners for this particular episode tonight that they all might be able to receive this in the spirit of truth, of understanding, of love, of sharpness, of that component where a lot of times the correction that we all need doesn't feel good, but it's for our good. It's to make us better. It's to make us accountable. It's for us to have a level of consistent, intentional, deliberate, disciplined obedience and accountability. Thank you, God, for Sido, for giving me that so many years ago because it's blessed me in so many ways. And I pray, God, that it will bless other people. And I'm going to say that again, Sido, C-I-D dash D-O-A, consistent, intentional, deliberate, discipline, obedience, and accountability. It is that foolproof mantra that the Lord has given me and God for that. I say, thank you, God. I just ask that you would continue to bless this dark world that we're living in, that we have so much division and foolishness and foolery and twisting of words and making situations out of non situations and mass shootings and serial killings and all these other crazy things, God, but God, we still know that you are the light of the world. We know that you still hit sit very high, God, and that you still sit on the throne. And God, that you still yet have all of this under control. We would ask, God, that you just would provide us with continual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because those three together, God, just certainly helps us as humans to be better. God, I just ask right now that you would allow all the listeners under the sound of my voice to be blessed in a significant way. God, that those folks who've been praying for those significant life movements that you would allow this episode to be a part of that mindset shift that's necessary, God, for that development and growth that these individuals need, God. God, I would ask that you would be with Fabi as she away, is away, that you would be with Theo, that you would be with all of the authentic realness experts, that you'd be with my family, that you'd be with Theo's family, that you'd be with Fabi's family, and that, God, you would just cover the world because we all certainly need covering. So God, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you. And it's in the glorious and magnificent name of your son, Jesus, that we pray, amen. Amen. Amen and amen again. Mm -hmm. And to our listeners, the greatest part of this Authentic Realness podcast is each and every one of you. Realness. And we say thank you. We do not take you for granted. We thank you for your feedback. I pray that someone has been able to figure out the components of the theme song that Theo has challenged us on in the last episode. And I just pray that you all will continue to grow and develop, but also continue to provide that continual feedback to us. I also have to acknowledge Buzzsprout, as I always do, that Buzzsprout is my podcast promoting publishing company, broadcasting company of choice. Because certainly when my back end team goes and uploads the episodes on a weekly basis, Buzzsprout disseminates them to so many other platforms, even platforms that I didn't even know I was on. So certainly if you're thinking about broadcasting your own podcast, Buzzsprout is the way. And then in our typical concluding fashion, until next time, let us all be and stay spectacular together. Realness. Realness.